it's still not recording when I, uh, like I like. But either way, hello and welcome to another episode of Loose Cannon. This is a very exciting episode. Um, anyone who is, who's watching live, uh, ready to get here live, uh, you might notice the title. Uh, right when I have been given some information we don't like to talk about leaks about things coming out in the future but things about like development history and how things were changed that's pretty exciting uh and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh i took some notes on it uh, of what was <laughs> shared with us and we're just gonna read through these notes it's very interesting we'll, we'll get to that in a minute um, and I just want to come out the gate and apologize. I have a sinus thing right now, so I might sound like crap. and I'm, I might have to, uh, quick, quick mute myself occasionally. I should have, I should have, uh, keyed up a hot key for that, but, uh, hopefully <laughs> I'll be fine and I won't start coughing up a lung mid show. Um, but so, uh, how, how, how's your, how's your, uh, time been since our last episode? Right? Are you enjoying this season? Yeah, I am. Um, you know, like I said, I I, I waffle back and forth from Halo to to Destiny. So the um the extra event is over in Halo, so I've been in Destiny a little bit more uh, lately. I'm over mm-hmm. seventeen seventy now because you know, as a casual, this is how this is the pace. <laughs> yeah, I'm this just, is the pace I'm of a casual. I'm like eighteen oh two right now, and I was like, oh, power grind. I hate it. <laughs> Well, what's funny is I got over 1770, my wife and I, and then immediately afterwards we did the mission that we were able to do, you know, because we don't like to do things under leveled. It's just, it's a nightmare. I don't like it. I, I'd rather spend the time that I have available enjoying the content, right? Mm-hmm. So, I understand. Yeah. And so at that level, we went in and did, we did the things and then, you know, we immediately did like five missions because we they were all opened up to us now. We knocked them all out, did some Crucible. And then immediately after that, it was just like, you get this reward, you get this reward, here's this, here's this, all this stuff. Like, here's the war table. It's like 15 yeah. things unchecked. And I was like, golly. Yeah, the, the, the couldn't even check them off like all. The exotic quests, uh, they, were, they were a good time with this expansion. I really, I, I really enjoyed them. I did enjoy the, um, the exotic quest for uh, the machine gun. That was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. We have to do the next one, whatever that was. was. It, it's in my it, quest list. It's the one with the uh, where you're re rebuilding the Cloud Strider. Uh, yes. Hard yeah, that drives. One. Yeah, we're still doing those. We've got two of them knocked out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a fun one. Hard drives. Yeah, they look like they look like plug-in hard that's drives. That's what they are, right? Because it's like all their memories and stuff, and it's just sure. like so. You're you're telling me like they were just basically streamers, and this is where all their vods are kept. Yeah. I would like to delve into that one day um, and talk about the Capybara Kids episodes. Capybara? Capybara? What? Yeah. Yeah. They got like a, you know, they got like a Captain Kangaroo kids show for the Cloud Striders or for the people of Niamuna, for the kids of Niamuna. Oh my God. I didn't, I don't know how I missed that. Oh, it's hilarious. Uh, There's like four, I think there's three or four. Uh, things all you got to type in an Ishtar's capybara and read them all. They're awesome. It, it's great. like it, it almost sounds like Dora the Explorer is reading to you. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of good lore that came from from this expansion, and I haven't read much of it because so much of it is like in this screwy API right now. Like there there's one whole lore book that I assume is just kind of like a recap lore book that if you're a veteran player you still don't have because you get it from going from rank one to rank six. But if you're a veteran player, you start at rank six. Oh, weird. Yeah. So it's like, there's this one book that's just gone. It's not available for us. And it'd be nice. Weird. I, it might be in the API hmm. now, but I've, I've been bad at, at checking in on that. I've just been fully focused on like, well, I, I've only Getting talked about stuff done. that's like you know readable on Ishtar. Yeah. <laughs> did you see what happened with you know, Ishtar? Like, the other yeah. Day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah Ishtar, I Ishtar is going through it. It. I, I'm technically a part of the staff on Ishtar because I'm on the spoiler squad, which is kind of a defeated purpose at this point because Bungie is just flagging everything and delaying release e- extremely, as it is now. And I, I, I felt it was like my responsibility to be like, I like I get 
that we're all relaxing at the end of the fiscal year and it's like a new year and all, but this happens every year at the end of March, the the website suffers in some way. And right now, ishtar-collective.net, they accidentally loaded a 25-year-old version of it. it. I mean, it's embarrassing. It's like it's like Windows Windows. It's looking. Windows 95. That's insane. All right. Um, would you like to get into the lore card this week? Yeah. And then we will get into um, the what the title of this episode is about. You got it. All right. All right. So this lore. Hey, I had it queued up. There it was. Okay. <laughs> oh wow! This one got. You know, I, I'm always amazed by what gets <laughs> a ridiculous amount of likes on Twitter and what what doesn't. <laughs> It's, it's all it's timing and like who sees it, but say la vie, right? Yeah. Um. So this one is is uh, al had al is like the you know Arabic pronunciation of it, but we all mm-hmm. know it as an al here in America. Um, what it is is it's a uh, it's a sighting device, and this 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 is also an ornament for a destiny gun uh crimson Mm -hmm. um sorry if i sound weird i got allergies so if you look at the ornament just right off the bat you notice it's got like a a, a dreaming city kind of theme right Mm -hmm. and and we know that dreaming city is you know the queen marasov and her techions and the dreaming city has all of the um what would you call that structure it's almost like porcelain and the the oh okay yeah the the like crystals the reflective crystals yeah so there is a lot of like really smooth and angular reflective crystals that have some sort of like cosmos in it you know mm-hmm. and then there's like this like i don't it's almost like a really polished bone surface everywhere it's almost mm-hmm. like ceramic you know yeah um, so the rocks are porcelain ceramic looking, and then there's the blue crystals, and then there's a lot of like tech stuff around it. And so this ornament is very much that, you know, it's just, it's, it's trying to get you to think about that. Right. You know, yeah. it's got like a dagger on the front of it, just like crimson wood, you know, it's yeah. like a miniature, um, pulse rifle. Uh, that's what everybody calls this hand cannon. Cause it has such, you know, has such good range. It really works like a hand cannon slash pulse rifle which is funny uh given the name (laughs) that it has uh the the alpha alpha aid is an instrument which is used for plotting celestial objects uh Mm -hmm. surveying and measuring angles Uh, this was first invented during the islamic golden age in the ninth century a.d Uh, so this tool while it's like really old in origin and has to do with um you know some very serious things it very much is funny because of its connection to <laughs> like the techions you know their astrolat or astro what is it called what is the thing that they have in the big room that's a big like you know spinning sphere with all the little rings around it what is that thing called if anybody knows i i can't it's, remember what it's, that's fucking called um it's like how the it's like how the techions are able to navigate, you know, the their whatever. That thing isn't the one that the speaker has, right? There are two different. Devices. No, it's it's Mars version of it, where they have yeah. uh, you can go into it and like basically teleport into the upside down and well, you can't anymore. come back. Well, no, and... you, you teleported into Mara's um, throne court. world. No, no, her throne <laughs> world is the shattered throne. Her okay. court was the 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 zone that we went into. Yeah. So, however, they're doing this. The Techions have some really cool stuff, and they're able to walk ley lines, which are these like rifts that happen through, you know, the in between reality. I guess I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, it, it, it gives it was them like the ascendant plane, and then reality, and then the ley lines are the the layers between that, which they're they're supposed to be many. Yeah, and there's so so there's like they're all connected mm-hmm. in one way or another, and the techions keep that connection with their like weird ritual that looks like some seance, and that's probably why they're called tech witches because they, you know, appear to be like witches 
in that well, they're, regard. They're called tech witches because of the uh, technological augmentation that they get during their, um, I guess, during their training. Yeah, they're in, they're enhancements that they yeah, have bolted on. Yeah. So, so it's funny because you know, on the surface, you look at the ornament, and you're like, I don't know what that is. But when you read about it, you start to understand like they're really kind of picking up on something because. Mm-hmm. An alphadade is a type of instrument that's used for servering, measuring angles, and it, it's actually the name, the root name of it means the sighting device. So if you think about like looking down the crimson and <laughs> the sight sucks on crimson, but if you think about looking down the sight on, on crimson, you're able to hit targets really far away. So it's kind of like, you know, really accurate pulse rifle like hand cannon versus all of its, you know, brothers and sisters in the hand cannon world, which are like, I hope I hit it, <laughs> but when you hit it, it's like a truck, right? And then, uh, so if you think about the gun in its totality and how it operates, and then you think about how the tech witches are, it's funny how they're kind of playing with that word dynamic because an alpha aid uh, was believed to be, you know, the first uh, cosmological plotting device, if you if you think of it in that way. Uh, so during the time of the um, Islamic Golden Age, uh, they had this uh, period of great development in the fields of astronomy, mathematics, and geography. And this is kind of what really propelled the world to kind of be involved with, like, you know, trying to understand stars and the cosmos at the time, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, Scholars and scientists were highly interested in measuring the angles and the distances of stars the moon and other celestial objects Uh, they soon realized that they needed a sophisticated instrument that could accurately measure these angles and thus the alhadade was born um the alhadade consists of this like straight edge it's placed along the line of sight and with little sighting mechanisms at one end and then the sighting mechanism would typically consist of a small hole or slit and the user would look through it so that they could see the object that they're measuring. And the straight edge of the alphabet marked the series of graduated scales along the user to measure those angles and distances. Uh, and it was very, very precise. So the alphabet evolved to become a highly sophisticated instrument, but it was not only used in astronomy, it was used in surveying, navigation, map making, and it's actually still used today. I don't know if you've ever seen some people when you're driving on the side of the road and they've got those tripods and they're this weird little thing at the top of it. And some guys looking through it, like almost like a telescope. Yeah. That's the, when they're uh, doing construction. The yeah, you go. So when they're doing construction and stuff for, for new buildings, new plots of land, they use these, um, hmm. it's a more, you know, <laughs> it's a more updated version, obviously, but it, in, in, in its, in its whole, it's still very much the same as it ever was when it was first invented. Um, it's an important tool and it was invented during the uh, golden age of uh, Islamic golden age, but it's still recognized for its precision and accuracy in measuring those angles and distances. Um, its legacy continues to live on and is still being used by professionals in a variety of fields today. Um, so if you ever get to like, look at one and you look at it, it's a very short, compact dome on the top of it, but it has this very precise, intricate, machined surface and these little angles with a bunch of like you know notches for for measurements and stuff like that and you sight through it and you can pretty much just measure and look at everything around you you can measure it to like you know like inches within distances of each other and so Hmm. it's a really neat tool uh so it's funny that they use that naming convention for an ornament on crimson and then they throw all this queen's uh theme on it you know the dreaming city theme on it uh so it's a cool little thing and what i also noticed uh was on the site of crimson if you look at the very end of it the little notch at the top it is very much the first alpha dates uh sighting slit (laughs) that's interesting yeah and there's even a little arrow on the side of it which points and that would technically be the part that you would like you know turn up and down on the dial to to get the measurement and it's so it's pointed directly at the barrel (laughs) of course 
So there you go. Alpha That's dudes. interesting, yeah. Yep. Well, um, I don't really know how to transition into this because it, it's <laughs> it's it's such a it's such a an amazing thing to learn. Um, so I guess what I should say is the first part about this. I'm not sure this is not info based. This is based on information we have and my assumptions. It's not information we were given. Obviously the giver of said information is going to re remain anonymous. Um, but so remember back in witch queen, everyone was like, Oh, we're going to get like the hive poison power and stuff like that. I, yeah, I, we did I, it too. Yeah. No, I mean, everyone really thought that and I, it, it feels like, it feels like we were supposed to get that. And I know now that they kind of had like that trailer where they were like, oh, are we going to do a poison class? And it was called Vapor based on the leaks, right? It was called Vapor. And uh, they were like, no, we, we wanted to do something different. And so from my understanding, that was supposed to happen. We were supposed to get Vapor, and then in Lightfall, we were supposed to not actually get a Darkness one, because we were supposed to get Stasis, Vapor, Insert, we'll get to that, and then Final Shape gave us our final. This is my assumptions. So, today we have Strand. In development, Strand was not green. Uh, so... Let's let's just get into this. These are, these are the notes I wrote. Um, it's it's kind of it's kind of mind blowing. Just like getting to talk about it. So, Strand was originally designed as a Siva subclass. So go back a season. Right, right now we're in season of Defiance, Lightfall. Uh, in season of the Seraph, uh, leaving off. This is what I wrote. Leaving off of the season of the Seraph, Witch Queen season four. The death of Rasputin was to kick off a storyline of Siva going truly rampant. Uh, so Rasputin was eh, Rasputin was preparing a plan B, Siva, to hold back Zivu, attempting to redeem himself uh, for his past, past actions against Felwinter and the Iron Lords. And Ras but then Rasputin ultimately sacrifices himself, and Siva just goes nuts without an overseer. And so. When we were on Neomuna, we were actually supposed to find a cache of Siva and use it to destroy Callus's anti-light dark terminals. You know those fucking things that put up the domes? And it's like, yeah. oh, yeah. it stops stasis. And it's like, but it doesn't know what Strand is. It can't stop Strand. Siva was supposed to take that out. <sighs> but, as we do with Strand, you use it for a little bit, and then you, you can't use it anymore. You fall down, you're you're exhausted, right? And so what thematically was supposed to happen is Siva was slowly taking over our bodies, kind of like it did to the Iron Lords in Rise of Iron. Yeah. And that's why we couldn't use it at first. We, we didn't know how to master it. So think of Strand as it is now. Uh, hunters are a great example but all classes now do have the grapple uh so uh grapples were still a thing they would use uh tendrils like we saw those tendrils in rise of iron a lot of this is based on if you actually have played rise of iron and understand the intricacies of siva um it'd be a little harder for a new person to understand it so sorry about that but so using tendrils you would you know, shoot them out, and you'd have a instead of a tangle being formed, or um, are the are the ones you can pick up also called tangles? Yeah, yeah. Okay, the little balls. Yeah, yeah. Instead of a tangle being formed, you'd effectively actually have Siva create a sleeper node. You know those like little music boxes that we're always finding yes. when dealing with with Rasputin. So that that would be created midair instead of a tangle, which is like, oh, it's tied to psychic space energy it, it would it would create yeah. like a physical object that's there and then it would it would self-destruct as siva's energy ran out or whatever the case so tendrils and nanites were like the two big things in the classes like these were the things that we would see and so like right now um hunter suspend build suspend is is overpowered 
uh, it, it, it locks out champions. It, it, you know, it's it's so crazy how effective it is in PVE. Uh, suspend used to be locked up with tendrils instead of, again, psychic string. Uh, severed enemies, which is the debuff that enemies do less damage against you, they were affected by Siva nanites. They would they would infect their body, kind of like how we had in the story uh, when we would collapse. And then uh, one that I've learned that I hate playing against in PvP and Trials this morning, uh, Threadlings were just clusters of nanites that would swarm. And so then the, the final awesome. one is... is um, That's cool. Yeah, it would it would have been amazing. It would. Uh, I, I like yeah, it how it is. It would have sucked well, to play but, against you, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so then unraveling rounds, those are the ones that shoot the little missiles out and, and swoop back in and crap. Again, yeah. they were just more focused clusters of nanites. And probably one of the the biggest things about it though, right? The Warlock Super, as we've heard, uh Bungie talked. They wanted it to make you like a big spider and you'd grow legs. Think about Siva and, and spider like creatures. And and who might you think of? Yeah, Axis. Thank you. Axis. I was hoping you would say it. Yeah. That was basically what the Warlock was gonna get. They were like, we're gonna make the, the Warlocks a mini Axis. And and you know his white mechanic where you had to go stand on the on the pillars and then see uh see i think it was actually called siva swarms yeah uh, that would be your attack you do your siva swarm which is now what people i don't know what it's actually called people call it bug barrage <laughs> which i i think that's a great name um obviously that was toned down to just be bug barrage because coding in spider legs walking around was not gonna fucking happen and it was just right. a Siva swarm attack um but yeah that would have been uh, awesome I guess, that would i guess been so all cool. that there is uh oh sorry were you saying something no i was saying that would have been awesome that would have been yeah, cool it would have and that's all the information that we have so i guess the only thing that's left to say is april fools i was hoping you were gonna <laughs> join in on me with that i feel like a dick saying it by myself <laughs> Oh, I had that thought. April I Fools. had that thought that that Strand and Siva are eerily similar, and I just like shit shitting shit posting with my friends uh, in, <laughs> in my clan. I said I was like, yeah, man. I bet if I was a more toxic person, I can go on like 4chan and just make a a post about how Strand and Siva thing, yeah. and actually convince people. Yeah, it would it would be very compelling. It just goes to show you how, um, you know it. It's it's because we want it. It's so easily to, it's so easy to believe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. People are craving Siva, and especially now that we're expecting to get Wrath of the Machine this year as well. It's it's it just it, the stars aligned to just be a fucking asshole and tell people that Strand was originally <laughs> Siva. Uh, so if you're lucky enough to have been a, a live viewer. <laughs> or just an audio viewer because i don't think anyone's gonna be talking about this we're, we're a very no. niche thing <laughs> yeah we are very niche that's funny though i Dude, am that, really so am all of really those connections make oh sorry it's crazy because all of those little connections make so much sense when you yeah. think about it that way. <laughs> it just it just it, it just fell into my lap and i had to take it where i was like yeah, no wait, sure. wait, wait, wait this works this works like everything that buddy yeah. said yeah. and the the biggest reason why i did that is i'm actually upset with siva being red because strand is supposed to be the red string of fate that ties everyone together but they can't right. have it be you're red right but now because people be would say it's siva of... <sighs> psychic string that's like not a that thing you said the red, red string, string of, fate of fate is a thing yeah yeah I like that you said that. Yeah. Well, you know my, you know my crazy uh, brain with the whole uh, the sisters of fate, the fate, you know, the cutting and the oh, threads yeah, 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 and yeah. all of that. Yeah. yeah. You go on about that stuff. <laughs> it's because this whole game is about it. Um, yeah. You're I mean, just to, you know, to recap real quick, destiny is another. It's a synonym for it's a syn it's a synonym. It's a synonym. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's a cinnamon. Uh, no, it's basically fate 
and destiny are the same word. And so when you think about the sisters, the three sisters, the Morais, they're called, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in folklore. The three sisters, the kindly yep. ones. Yeah. They are, you know, you've, you've seen tons of stuff about them and probably Disney movies even. Uh, but they're the ones that that dictate the lifespan and the fate of humanity. And mm -hmm. one of them spins the, 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 the life, their thread of life. And one of them measures the thread of life uh, for mm -hmm. all mortals. And then the last one cuts the thread of life for all mortar, mortals. And the hunter, Titan, and warlock all embody the uh, Mirai, the yeah. fates. My favorite depiction and, uh, of them is in um, the series Sandman, the Sandman, because in that series, you don't know which version yes. of them you're going to get. They just, they, you know, you can get they the, alternate. the kindly ones, you can get the Mirai, you can get the Grey Sisters, and they all have a different demeanor on how they interact with you. Yeah. And so a lot of cultures have different names for these three sisters and, exactly. you know, they're kind of morphed. Yeah. What's cool about them is they're they're in you know they're in Greek and Roman mythologies, but they're also in a lot of like Scottish uh, poems and uh, I mean they even pop up in in Native American uh, folklore uh, in that. a way. That's interesting. Yeah, in a way they do, and that's because of the Western influence at the time. Hmm. But but what's really cool is. Uh, What's really cool about it is just like they all keep the same idea and whether they're three entities side by side as three separate sisters or all mm -hmm. combined as one with just three uh, personalities coming forward at each time or all three of them talking in unison. It's it's a really interesting idea to think that all three fates can exist without one another. But the cool thing about them is that gods, humans anything that exists are dictated by the fates. So even yeah. like Zeus, who was, you know, the God of all gods was afraid of the fates. Yep. They, they, so. they decide when Zeus dies as well. Yeah. They decide what's going to happen. Yeah. So I think it was a... actually in the, um, the Netflix adaption of the Sandman. Uh, they, they did kind of what you said where it was, it was one woman but she would like flicker between the three different personalities because it's uh what is it the maiden yep uh the maiden the yeah, mother, and the crone there you go yeah it's like the the <laughs> in some some things they they are depicted as like three old hags but <laughs> yeah so it depends on where you're reading it but yeah a lot of them are presented as like the young the midlife and then the old the elder yeah, there's because there's uh, a lot of overlap with her because the 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 maiden, the, the mother, and the crone is also uh, apparently I just, I just googled this apparently uh, the symbolizes the three three phases of the moon. Um, yeah, the that's life another cycle one of the moon, a phase of the moon, and often rules one of the realms of heaven, earth, and underworld. Which there you go. Yeah. There's another. They just, they just get passed around um, on on what their duty is for from culture to culture. Yeah, so they they've got a lot. They've got a lot of uh, variations on the same um, characters from folklore. Hopefully that works. Yeah, it's cool though because it's not only it's not only the guardians that have um, a lot of lore that that parallels them with the fates. It's also the enemies, and all races have had in one way or another some sort of uh, lore in the lore in the stories that have said explicitly things that mirrored with the fates. The Vex have one, the the Hive have one, and now even the Cabal have one. Uh, I haven't seen, I mean, other than the fact that the Fallen constantly are using like the terms weaving and threads and egg cloth and all of those things, I haven't seen anything explicitly done up for the Fallen yet, like in the lore, but the other, other, uh, three have uh have lore that explicitly say you know weave cut measure basically repeated yeah. lines so it's a it's something that they love playing with in the lore and why not because the whole game's called destiny 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it, we're 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 spiraling towards the end right now. You know, like the, the yeah. witness, the witness has gone wherever the witness is gone, and the future seasons of this expansion, uh, apparently, we've yet to see the the how this will play out, but apparently, are going to be about actually like getting us to the final shape. And it, it's not it's not going to be like last last year where season one was season of the risen. It's like, well, what's happening? Oh, Zivu's kind of attacking. Why don't you go deal with it? And then season two was um, season of the haunted. It's like, well, what's happening? Oh, Kalos came back. Why don't you go deal with that? And then season three, it's like, what's happening? It's like, oh, well, Aramis came back. Why don't you go deal with that? And then season four, it's like, what's <laughs> happening? It's like, oh, well, Zivu's actually still kind of around, but we got Rasputin back. So why don't you go deal with that? This is going to be right. more focused from from yeah. what we've heard so far um you know it's a there's a lot of loss right now and so the connection with strand is about like you know loss and sorrow and and whatnot so like our ability to get grasp and use strand is um suppose supposedly in the lore rooted around uh that whole like you know like suffering or suffering a loss basically Mm -hmm. i guess is the best way to say it yeah, um, because based on uh, what Osiris tells us about it, uh, Strand is it. It sounds kind of like the opposite to Stasis, where Stasis is about like con- control, and Strand is about letting go of control. Yeah, there you go. That's a good analogy. Yeah, very much so. Um, what else is interesting is you know we just lost a- uh, Amanda mm-hmm. in game. Well, yeah, I was gonna, and, I was gonna um, lead up to that. <laughs> yeah. So that kind of connects into where we're going with this. Yeah, because so so this season, uh, this season is season of the defiance, and Mara is is standing in the farm and telling us that we are going to defy the witness because the witness has set forth plans of uh, capturing humans for some reason and and Elixney as well. Uh, I don't think we've seen Cabal uh, leave their cages. No, I haven't seen that one. So then, for whatever reason, the witness right now has been capturing humans in Elixni, and so the two kind of leading the front, or uh, I guess is the fairest way to say it, it's the four kind of leading that that cause are Mara, Devrim, uh, Mithrax, and Amanda, and um, so we're we're going around uh, the EDZ and the Cosmodrome, and also a witness uh, ship, a pyramid ship, and freeing captives who who were who were captured by the witness and for whatever means we don't know but they're using it's it's using the shadow legion to defend them and in the latest one or i guess not the latest one the second the latest one um amanda sacrificed herself so everyone can get out did you see that coming um no i did not see that coming and i was you know i'm Obviously, was wasn't playing because I like to I like to spoil everything for myself. But I was watching a, a Twitch streamer go through this story, and uh, of course, it got to that moment, and I was like, "Nah, there's no way." And then I was like, "Wait a minute, yeah, there is. This is totally going to happen." Yeah. And then it just and then it happened. I was like, "Yep, I should have I should have saw that coming because if you remember in the missions beforehand, there was a lot of little subtle uh, foreshadowing." Well, okay, because like aside from Amanda constantly like being like ah, you know I only have one life and and like saying things like that, which th- why do humans always say that when they're hanging out with guardians? They, they they don't shut up about the fact that they don't have additional lives, and it's like yeah, we get it. Like that's why we don't want you in the middle of this fight. And <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. But, I don't but what, know. I'm, what I'm saying, not so much did you see foreshadows to it. I mean, in that mission where she's in the control room and you're fighting off the boss or whatever, uh, and, and yeah. a tormentor spawns, and, and Mithrax is leading everyone out, and then she turns and looks at something, and then she turns back, and then the explosion comes from behind her, and it felt like she knew that she was sacrificing herself. She made the conscious decision to sacrifice yeah. herself. I did not know she made the conscious decision to sacrifice herself until the explosion happened. 
Oh, you didn't? No, I totally saw that because she knew there was no way out, and the only way to save them to get the open to to keep the door open for them was to stand there and manually hold the controls. Okay, so it was just a me thing because I I felt very, yeah, it was just a you thing. I felt very like confused where that came from. Uh, I felt like not like like how did they kill Amanda? Like, but like literally, how did she know? that that was sacrificing her because like she accepted it but i was like i didn't see the point where she realized that that was leading to her death i didn't realize it was leading to her death so that's funny i was very well you know what happens you know what's crazy about that whole thing is um you know what why did she go down there anyway (laughs) i mean based on Stay away. I know you're like a badass and your, you know, your proximity dictated that you needed to get there because of the sense of urgency. But also, you know, I guess at that moment, she kind of had to know, hey, you know what? If I die, I die. I got to get down there and do it no matter what. Yeah. And I mean, so like going into that, Aramis comes on the comms and it's like telling them like, you cannot go in there. You are not going to make it out. Um Yeah. Oh, okay. Mother Mother Codfish in chat said when she saw the timer when the lockdown happened, I didn't notice a fucking timer. That's entirely on me. I was not observing the situation <laughs> as well as everyone else. So I was just sometimes confused. you pay sometimes you pay too much attention, like I, was, I do, yeah. and then you miss the main meat. <laughs> like they put they put the timer in the center of the screen, and Amanda went like, "Hmm, yes, I will sacrifice myself." And I'm like, "What's in that bottom corner right there?" <laughs> Um, but yeah, Aramis, Aramis chimes in. Uh, we haven't heard from her since season of the plunder. Oh wait, no, no, we did. We, we have heard from her, which actually, that's another thing. I saw this mentioned and it, it did, it did confuse me at the end of season of the Seraph. Aramis tries to destroy the traveler to prevent yep. it from leaving or whatever, to prevent the witness from succeeding, which is like an extreme measure, but extreme, uh, circumstance called for it, blah, blah, blah. Um, we were, and again, maybe this is, this is me not understanding. We were right outside the room Aramis was in, in that mission in season of the Seraph, right? We were. Okay. We weren't. Okay. I thought we were. And I saw someone say, how did Aramis get away? And I was like, how did she get away? (laughs) If we were right fucking there, and like, why didn't we go after her? Like, we had her on a space station at the very least. Like, there's no actual getting away from us, right? Yeah, no, we weren't. I don't think we were that close, like you said. I don't. I mean, I even really if we don't. weren't that close, we're still on the space station. You'd think that we would be yeah. close enough to pre- prevent her from fleeing. Dude, that's a good one. Yeah. But Aramis chimes in, tells him not to go. Mithrax and Amanda say, fuck you, Aramis, we're going. And, I mean, Amanda was going to do it anyway. I agree. I think Mithrax actually said that line. that, Or maybe Devrim said it to Mithrax after he was beating himself up about it. Amanda right. would not have listened to Aramis. So the fact that Mithrax went with her made it so that at the very least she didn't die in vain. That she didn't die trying to save them. And then they also died. She died so they could live. Right. Right. Which, um, so yeah. I just I just want to say something real quick. So I was uh, playing the missions, you know. And so uh-huh. I had seen all this on Twitch streamer, obviously, from watching other people play it. But when I was playing the mission, personally playing the mission, uh, there was a dialogue line. And it's still available in the Battlegrounds uh, playlist. When you get that particular uh, mission, when you go to save the prisoners, mm-hmm. they, she says at one point, she goes, um, I can't remember exactly, but I recorded it. She says something like, uh, well, I guess that's why I've been running around with like, uh, like I always do with my hair on fire. This Wait, is before what? she died. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's, that's uh, bad taste, Bungie. What the fuck? Yeah, because then she dies in a fiery blast, and you get this really good shot of her, you know, throwing back her hair, and it's yeah. all fire behind her. So yeah. that was foreshadowing. Jeez, there's there's some right. more that's too. Not if you foreshadowing. Could, I wish that's we could just go taste. back and play all the missions the way they were. Yeah, I mean you can. You know they have the weeklies, but 
I wish you could just go back and replay them constantly. Yeah, no, I agree. At the very least, like through the year, like let me just redo it. Like, like we have that um, that legacy terminal, right? Where it's like, oh, you missed yeah. this quest. You never did it. Why can't we just re up the quest? And it's like, here's a thirty step quest. There's no rewards. There's no additional XP anymore. Things like that. But you can do it if you want. Here, here it is again. Yeah. Here's the quest. Here's the objectives. You know that that would be a, a a great quality of life. I think it wouldn't be a very used quality of life, but I can't imagine it would be very hard to implement it. So it would be a great right. Life. Well, you know, we remember we had meditations with. Uh, um, we did, yeah, with Akora. Yeah, with Akora. Yeah. So, Amanda, and this might have been a, a weird foreshadow, but it's one that we should keep our eyes on. Amanda, uh-huh. to my knowledge, used to be the vendor who would give you your prime loot. And they moved it to Rahul. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And that change happened like right when, <laughs> right when we got the season. And I was thinking that too. I was like, why is this over here now? Yeah. I just assumed I don't know because why, but closer, I assume right? that like, she, oh, I don't want to yeah. go all the way over there just for yeah. prime loot. <laughs> Because nobody went down to where Cade was anymore because yeah. he's gone. Oh my god, Cade was down there. That's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Why the fuck was Cade? Yeah. Why is a why are either way. I liked it better <laughs> when they were all at their, their little room and it's like here's the van. Yeah, room. and the same table. Yeah. And then they had Eris like off in her corner. Yeah. Eris gets to be nearby. At first, she wasn't even allowed in there. She was out on the. She was way out on the balcony with her fucking shit attached to the tower. Like, what the fuck? Why? Why do you get that special privilege? Yeah. So, as it is now, Amanda is dead. Uh, her her body's at the farm still, which is a little odd just to have it like out in the open air like that. It's marinating. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> usually Destiny follows like real life time with a little give or take. So it, this kind of tells me like that they've just let her sit there for a week. Right. Maybe not. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. Um, in any case, do you think Amanda will come back as a guardian? No. You really don't. I don't because they pretty much do. I mean, and I don't, I don't, I don't speak to definitives because stuff changes all the time, mm-hmm. but I don't see a world that she would fit in um, being shoehorned back into the, to the game in that way. Okay. You know what though? The only way I could see her coming back is if uh, she was like, you know, not her. Like when Kabir says, I'm, I'm not me. Well, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Because so Amanda is one of the few human characters that we actually have a number of interactions with. And there was a line, and I think it might have been from Destiny One, where she talks about how um she would always wait for the day that her parents would come back as a guardian. And I always thought that was that was horrible and like tragic. Because yeah. here, here's this person saying, I can't wait for my, pa- I, can- I dream of a day where my parents come back to life, or maybe just my mother. I don't think they've ever actually addressed her father, um, come back to life as a guardian. And I'm like, that would, that would ruin you because that person would come back and walk up in front of you and not know who and you are. And not were. know you. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be like, I'm not your parent. Like, I'm someone completely different. I, I, You weren't there when I was revived. I picked my own name. I don't have a daughter. I don't know who you are. You're the shipwright. Sell me a sparrow. Like, that's that's it. <laughs> do you think, do you think Sabathun would have, like, if, if she was our friend right now and she was around, do you think she would be able to unlock, if Amanda was, okay, here's a weird speculate, okay. speculation question. If Amanda was resurrected as a guardian right now and Sabathun was hanging out with us and she was our friend, do you think Sabathun would be able to unlock her pat, previous past memories like she did for the crow? I honestly feel like that's a special circumstance that only crow has. Yeah. I was kind of thinking the same thing, and like the only reason she was able to do that is because she had a tie to the darkness that yeah. originally infected his mind when he was searching for his sister. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. 
Okay. Like, um, they didn't really go into the house because I feel like if word got around that Savathun can restore memories, that right, we would, we like, would. Why be hasn't she restored ours? Yeah, yeah. We, we would be like, okay, but how? How'd you do that? I would like to have that done to me. Thank you. Like, but also, don't you think it's funny that Anna researched herself and then just basically decided that she was going to be the previous herself? And that's, that's even though that she happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it it but, also happened with um, with Sa- Savathun. You know, Savathun set up her own like, uh, almost like tutorial. Like, if she died, if she died and placated herself to the Traveler and was re- resurrected as a Guardian or as a Risen, I guess. Uh, yeah. She she had already set up the motions for her newly risen self to walk down so that she would have enough memory to continue. Um, however, mm. Amanda did that. Not Amanda. Anna did that because they woke up with their Anna Bray ID badge and they're like, okay, who's Anna Bray? And then someone was probably like, oh my God, you're one of the Brays. Blah, 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 blah. And so then she yeah, looked into go it. Go research it. So yeah. yeah. Shinobu is another one. Himura Shinobu. Uh, they died while on the trail as a human. Uh, I think they were escaping the town. Uh, yes. Yeah. They were a town called Coyote. Or... Yeah. That's how so, they came up with the six coyotes. Yeah. Yeah. They were escaping the town. They were with a group of guardians. They died in escaping. And then a ghost, uh, I believe it was actually one of, uh, uh, Mika Ten's ghosts. Uh, went over and revived Shinobu, and Shinobu revives, and they have a a journal, and they have people who recognize them as Shinobu, and some of the guardians uh-huh. were like pissed. They were like, "You're not Shinobu," like they died. Right. So, so they decide to be Shinobu. Yeah, they're like, "Yes, I am. Here's my journal. I have these memories, and that's good enough." Right. And I think that's you know I think, that's that's some twisted that's some twisted stuff now that you think about now that I'm is. thinking about it, yeah. And that's why I think I would potentially enjoy a- a Amanda coming back because yeah. right now, if Amanda wasn't dead right now, you would have this really interesting story that went back all the way to Beyond Light. When was Crow still wearing the mask? Remember that stupid mask he wore. Yeah, and Beyond Light. Yeah. Oh, oh, Season of the Hunted. Yeah, so that was Beyond Season Light. of the Hunt. Yeah, so it's right at the beginning of Beyond Light. And then he lost the mask in the season after that when he dove in front of Zavala. That was when he was going to get assassinated, right? Yes. So Crow wearing a mask. Amanda doesn't know who he is. They're flirting. They're doing their thing, and they're friends. Whatever. Crow loses the mask. Is revealed to be Aldrin air quotes, uh, is revealed to have once been Aldrin Sav, who killed mm-hmm. Amanda's very good friend, Kate Six. And mm-hmm. she's just like, oh, I can't forgive you, like, any time. And she needed all this time to finally get to a point where she can even talk to him. And it, I think it'd be really, it could be really well done if Amanda comes back as a guardian. No memories of who she was. No memories of Cade Six. So technically, she could have forgiven Crow, but now she's not Amanda. And it, like Crow's gonna go up to him and be like, oh my god, Amanda. She's like, I don't know who Amanda is. Like, I'm not Amanda, yeah. I'm someone different. And so you have Crow who's trying to prove that he is not Aldrin, while also trying to disprove that this new guardian is still Amanda. Right, right. And so that that that, that's a really good like story arc for emo boy crow. Yeah, because it's like he he wants he wants to have it both ways where he can he can forsake his past, but she's not allowed to forsake her own. Yeah, he has to. She has to hold on to her past for him. I'll bring it up again, but do you remember when we first got Destiny Two and uh, they brought the Prodigal set for the Hunter, and it was Aldrin's old. All yeah. armor uh set his cape down to the cape and everything like the entire set was was Aldrin Prince Aldrin's from Destiny 1's outfit mm-hmm. and you could wear it as a hunter 
uh, and then, you know, of course you had the helmet, which was, you, did, you didn't see Aldrin's helmet, but we, we would assume Aldrin like has. it was probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> that particular uh, armor set was called Prodigal. And if you think about the word Prodigal, what does that mean? It's the, it's the person that's re returned and is now repentful for the previous deeds that they had done because they went through this long trial period, whatever, when they left and then they return. And you've heard it before, probably biblically, but it's called, they call it the prodigal son has returned. Um, that is, you know, the person that has gone and repent and come back and now is, you know, at the mercy of the people that are surrounding them. And so it was funny how they foreshadowed using that armor set years before we got Crow from Aldrin. Well, year, <laughs> because Aldrin died. Year, sorry. Second. Yeah. It's true. He died. In the we second. we didn't get crow for a while, but we knew he was coming. Yeah. And Sorry, to top all that? that off, we had the Telesto Easter egg, which said, um, "Crow untrustworthy desires power," or whatever it was. Which was the Easter egg that was found in the uh, text of flavor text of the folk, uh, the lore for uh, Telesto. Yeah, and that that one that one actually took so long to be found. To get, I know the, it's so that funny. The dude. author had to say, "There's a secret here," and then once everyone was actually looking at it, it took like a day. It was almost like I got yeah. it. <laughs> that was exciting. I'll never forget that. Was that. Yeah, it's it's yeah. stupid to say this about something so minuscule, but I actually remember where it was. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, because I was I was at work. I was um without giving away too many details i was at this one station at my job where uh labels are made and i was supposed to but i was looking at my phone and i saw the tweet that said i cracked it i think this is it throw untrustworthy right. whatever right. and i was like oh my god let's look at it and i had to go like tell you and baxter and everyone i was so fucking excited <laughs> 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 It's good stuff. Stupid. Good times. Oh my god! You know, there's some other ones. There's some other ones that I really like. Um, I, I love the little Easter eggs and the foreshadowing. Um, you know, like everybody loves to bring up the the spoiler alert sidearm. But yeah, someone's gonna die. Oh yeah, my god! Yeah, but that's just like that's just Amanda like the most died. vague. Yeah, I mean, everybody died. No, but they brought it back last season. I know they brought it back the season before that, and what's his name died, and then before that, what's his name died. It's like. No, they only but, brought it, they they brought it back. They they introduced it before Forsaken, and then Cade died. Yep. And then they there brought it go. back in season of the Seraph. Right. And they brought it back in season of the Seraph, and now fucking Amanda died. That's true. That's true. Saying that someone is going to die. I'm amazing. I mentioned it this far. I don't think we're coming out without losing someone. Sorry, I just found a. Uh, old thread or something yeah an old reddit post i just want to see where what they're saying yeah why uh, not though like no one was thinking no one was thinking um amanda a lot of theories were zavala yeah well because zavala was so sad yeah like defeated but like how I, are you going to kill somebody like that you know yeah and I mean, especially I now, it, though, because like yeah. he has been on like a downward spiral pretty much since Forsaken of like yeah. trusting in the traveler less and less and less and less and less and less. And now Amanda's yeah. died and he's just like, man, fuck the travel. Right. Yeah, it's really um, it's really especially sad now that we lost Lance Reddick, who voiced Zavala. I don't think we didn't even talk about that on the last episode, but he died. Well, I mean, the right last episode that, uh, yeah. was before the the news, wasn't it? Uh, it may have been. I can't remember. I it's been it a minute. So it's kind of like it's kind of like really sucky now because when you hear Zavala's dialogue in game, like I like I didn't even I don't even like picking up bounties from him now. Sometimes, yeah, <laughs> just because I go over there and he talks to me and I'm just like, oh. That yeah, it's, it's like I, I was choked up. Yeah, 
it's it's really rare for me to feel connected to uh any type of celebrity like there's there's very few celebrity uh, right. deaths that have actually affected me and when i heard right. the news i was like oh my god that really sucks and then i like the next day i went to play destiny and i went up to him and i heard his voice and he said something like uh he said something like oh god what did he say he said something that felt like very like like uh last words of a dying man yeah completely yeah. coincidental just and i was just going to pick up bounties and i was like god fucking damn it man i just got off i was like i don't i, I don't want to play right now like that's a, it just right. it really just cut me i know i it's funny because uh the other day i was playing um and i got an exotic uh uh eververse item you know mm-hmm. dropped right at the end of the battlegrounds and um I went to open it up, and as soon as I opened it up, it was the emote for Zavala. You know the Zavala emote where he pounds the table and you got your armor on? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was that, and I was like, God dang it. And so, suddenly I was like flooded with all this emotion. I was like, Jesus, why is it like this right now? Why do I, why do I feel like this so much right now for somebody who, you know, I didn't know personally, blah, blah, blah. But they had such an impact on you throughout the years because Zavala was like, you know, a central figure. And I mean, Lance Reddick, he was, he was like, he he was really a member of the community, you know, like. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That's the other thing too. He was a player. Yeah. You know, and he played Warlock. What is that? (laughs) And he was a things. warlock. Yeah. Not, I mean, uh, just Destiny. Gene, he had he had like a widespread career. Like he he did yeah. he did some roles that like I, I would hear him and I'd be like, Zavala would never say that. Like, because <laughs> I I knew him so well as Zavala, and it was like this yeah. this fucking trash show on on uh, Netflix, Paradise PD, where he, he plays Agent Clackers, which is an FBI agent, what? and you can fill in the blank on what his last name implies. And it, you know, it's just his voice. It's not like he, he does a new voice. So it's basically Zavala just talking about like really raunchy shit. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> you can almost dub it. Yeah. And then just I actually use did. it for dialogue and destiny. Did you? <laughs> I did. Yeah. I, I made that video. No one liked it. No one thought it was funny. That's funny. I'm not well, you know, pick uh, it up now. So, that's, some people's that's voices are just unmistakable, especially when you've heard them in Destiny. Like, you know, people know um, Nathan Fillion from Destiny, but they also know him from Halo and they also know him from Firefly. And it's even funny that, like, Gina Torres, is that who it was? Uh, the co star with him in Firefly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Icora's Icor. voice actress? Yes. So yeah, they were so. on Firefly together. Um, and in the original Destiny One, they had you know Firefly Easter eggs, and they even brought one in Destiny Two, which is the ornament for um, the Drifter's hand cannon you got from freaking Gambit. I can't remember the name right now. Trust um, or Malfeasance. Malfeasance, yeah. There's an ornament for it called uh, "I Aim to Misbehave," and that's a di- that's a that's something uh, Nathan Fillion says in Firefly. Huh. It's like an I'll iconic figure. line in Firefly, um, which is funny because I didn't watch Firefly until <laughs> Destiny. <laughs> we binge watched all of them and then watched the movie. Nice, but so, yeah, there's some good stuff. Yeah, I I know it's not like the end of the season. The way that seasons go now, I'm not sure if I if I prefer them to be this way to have like week weekly content drops. And then you have kind of this like lackluster end of season uh, at the halfway point. And then you have like three weeks later after everything is cooled, like all the hot blood is cooled and they have like a big moment for you to share. And it's like, I get that with like season of the Seraph where it's like, all right, well we needed, Aramis to do this literally right before Lightfall. I got that. I feel like nothing like that's going to happen for this season. 
Well, yeah, because it sets up the, that set up the big season, right? So like, yeah, the, they can the expansion. do that big cinematic season yeah. to season. I feel like you can end it and just let us grind for a little bit and be like, that's exactly it. the end of the season. Pick it that's up. That's what they're gonna season. do. I really feel like they're just gonna stretch it out like that. Yeah, because there's one more triumph uh, to to do. You know, it's gonna be the the very last week. They're gonna have a mission. It's gonna be one more mission, and it's. Maybe Amanda gets revived at the end of it, and she's like, "I don't know who the hell Amanda is." And it's, it's like, I, f- I just feel like if it's something like that, it, f- it would hit us. It would be better to do that week, 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 you know, and then have it not week, week, week. Skip four weeks, then have it. You're right. And I mean, that's just my opinion. Everyone's welcome to their own. No, I think you're yeah. right because that. I mean, how else are you going to make? Because I mean, it's a business. <laughs> it's yeah, a business. Radio, at the end of the day, it's got to make money. Message to listen to, so that implies there's right. one more mission to complete. Yeah, or hopefully there's one more mission to complete. If it's just a radio message, my God, you have to give us uh, <laughs> something more than that. <laughs> if if you're, gonna you know, they gave us a lot out. of content. They gave us a lot of content with Niamuna and all of the things, and 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 the lore has been uh, fantastic. You know, I've been di- diving into it a lot, and um, yeah. it, it's funny how much stuff we're really not talking about. I mean, like, you know, we're small potatoes in the landscape of like influencers on Twitter, but uh, even the main influencers on Twitter are not talking about some of these really like revelatory things that have happened i mean they're 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 you know they're touching on the big meat and potatoes of what's going on yeah. but for the most part a lot of us already know that but there's a lot of stuff and i encourage everybody to go out and read but there's a lot of stuff that's like oh crap wait a minute you know uh like even this stuff with with amanda has been pretty crazy uh and what's been happening on the edz is pretty crazy and um you know, it just it's like painful to watch people on the internet tear up the 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 season because they feel like there's nothing. <laughs> and I'm like, no, there's a ton, dude. There's yeah. a there's a ton of stuff. What are you I talking about? Yeah. God, I really sorry, the stream is, is stuttering and I really hope it's I really You know, I've been noticing like... on Twitch a lot lately, uh Twitch as a whole has been stuttering and I've been, I've got freaking, you know, awesome internet. Yeah, no, exactly. I need, I can't, I can't, we fixed the audio issue and now we're having the issue of, I can't stream and record at the same time. And Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that's going to lead because now I have to pull the audio from the stream. And if the stream is messed up and the audio is messed up, then the audio oh, phone is I don't, messed up. Yeah, like I don't think so. Out. I think it's probably more like a like a like on the the end user, yeah, like seeing so. it. Yeah, I hope that's yeah, the yeah. Because yeah. um, they, they the broadcast server would be on a separate yeah. connection or whatever. But to what you were saying, I really hope that Bungie kind of dials back their um their iron grip on lore right now. Because I feel like yeah. a big reason why people are not talking about it is because every season, um, we get all this. We get, like this season. I think we might have gotten like four or five new lore books. I, I don't know. And the main reason why I don't know is because I can't just go it's into the car and read it. That's right. It's locked up under key. Yeah. And I get it for like raid lore. Raid lore doesn't come out until the raid does. Maybe it's a week or two after the raid does. That's fine. That's understandable. You can't just release it like that. I get it. Most of the lore does not matter. And yeah. where it does, Ishtar has gone ahead and been like, all right, we're going to appoint some people to read the lore as as soon as they're able to and then flag it as an appropriate spoiler, uh, whether it's a seasonal spoiler because it's weeks ahead or it's a weekly spoiler because you got it this week. And so what we do is it's like, okay, well, you get one page a week. That's fine. Uh, that means this one releases this week, this one releases that week, and so on. And we, we just mark them all up within the first couple weeks of the game release, and then they're they're set. How it is now, it's like, here's two entries, and it's like, those are four weeks old. 
we don't have to do anything. <laughs> but now yeah. no one's getting to read it because you'd have to wait to read it or you have to read it in game. And I hate reading it in game. I really, really, truly do. Yeah, same here. But sometimes you're in a pinch and you're like, oh, I got to read it right now. Yeah, and then I have, to, I, have to, I, have to, I have to take fucking videos of it with my phone and then put it through a text, uh, an image-to-text reader and so we can have a fucking show on, on a lore book. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm sorry, but, like, my God, I want to talk about it. I do, but I want to talk about it because I can, I can, I can access it easily. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, and, you know, and I... <laughs> I hate to point fingers, but a lot of that's, you know, just the miners out there that are spoiling stuff. And it's not necessarily the data miners. Cause I, my viewpoint is I feel like anybody should be able to look at anything that's written or, or put out there on the internet uh, because it's there. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, you've got to make a cognitive decision. Are you going to be an asshole or not? <laughs> and yeah, uh, I, if I you're an asshole and you like to go around spoiling mining. shit. Yeah. I don't look down at anyone for data mining. I don't look down at anyone for looking for data mines. I look down at people exactly. who are like, oh, you're talking about this? I just read a data mine about it, and I want to tell you about it. It's like, don't fucking do that. Exactly. Read it's it. so not it's, cool. You know, it, it's it's yours. That's fine. Yeah. It's like, you know, you own an iPhone and you want to work on your iPhone or hack it or whatever. You should be yeah. allowed to do that. Go for but it. if you're going to go around tweaking other people's stuff or, or trying to reinvent the the iphone then you shouldn't be allowed to do your that, iphone you know on I mean? the table so i i jailbroke it for you hope you like it yeah exactly it's not cool no it's not well um do you have any anything more to say if if you're okay i'd like to end it early because my my nose is is uh I'm oh yeah back a lot no that's right fine now. that's fine we can cut it early if you need to yeah this is it's it's it's, it's only a little bit early and i <laughs> I'm holding back a lot of coughing and sneezing because I'm trying not to have that <laughs> just come out on, on the show. Are the allergy uh, is the allergy season hitting y'all down there real hard? I don't. I want to say I don't have allergies. I've never had allergies. What I do have is, uh, I guess the best way to call it would be like chronic uh, bronchitis and pneumonia. When I was a oh, kid, cool. I used so to get allergies. it every year. That's what you have. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's like. Like, I, I was telling my wife about it. I was like, oh, man, I'm having this thing. And she's like, oh, it sounds like you have acid reflux. And I was like, no. Nah. I, I mean, I've been getting this for 30 years. I know what it is. And she's like, oh, no, I think it's acid reflux because you're eating all that, yeah, it's that acid sausage. Reflux. And I was like, no. Nah. No, that's not what it is. I get this thing where it feels like my heart's on fire. Yeah, nothing like that. I'm like, my throat's scratchy. My stomach's queasy. And she's like, acid reflux. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah. And and now here I am where it, it comes in stages. Like that's stage one. That was Tuesday. It's like every spring Sunday, I feel I'm like here. this and I don't know why. Yeah. No, I'm aware of it. I wait for it to happen. It sucks. And I could I could I could <laughs> deal with it. But yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm just messing with you. <sighs> Whew. Held back a big one there. I also have uh I don't know why I have uh, a thing with my coughing where I cough so my lungs are so intense with coughing that uh, when I was a kid, doctors were afraid that I would get whooping cough and break a rib. And I was like, oh, oh that's man. Fun. Well, you know, that was a serious thing. Like, Apparently. Whooping. Oh, my gosh. It's they, were, they were like actually yeah. scared that I would develop it again. And they were like, that's not good. Like, that went away. Well, that's funny. That's funny you say that because in the 80s, it was like a big thing. Like, in the late 70s, early 80s, it was a big yeah. thing. And, um, Boy, it once it gets out there, but they pretty much got rid of it for the most part. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't a concern until yeah. I want to say like five years ago, people were getting it again all of a sudden. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm I'm patient zero on the the whooping call free and surgeons. Funny. You are outbreak prime. I am. That's that's great. That's that's great for our, our uh, earlier gym. <laughs> Um, either way, uh, if you want to listen to us, we're going to post the episode. It's not going to be able to go as live as immediately because once again, I, I can't actually record the episode anymore. I don't know why it's doing, I need to, maybe I just need to update OBS. Maybe that'll fix it. Um, so 
uh, you can find us at Loose Cannon Show. We are on what is now Spotify Podcast, so it should hopefully still be going everywhere and not just Spotify, because it used to be Anchor, and they used to put it on everything, and I need to look into that as well. Uh, have a good one, everybody. Bye!